if you've ever wondered why your favorite pro is carrying multiple different versions of the same disc in different plastics and whether or not that might be advantageous for you to try out yourself this video is for you i'm connor o'reilly with team lone star disc and today we're going to be talking about why you or anybody should be bagging multiple of the same disc in different plastics. Now there's a number of reasons why one might like multiple different plastics in the same disc. To me there's a couple main reasons. Number one is gonna be the feel of that plastic. So the feel in the hand, how you're able to get a grip on that disc, no matter what the conditions might be, really matter a lot in disc golf for being able to commit to the current shot at hand. And the different feels of plastic, the different stiffnesses, the different grip levels are gonna feel better or worse in your hand versus the next person. So you always gotta make sure you're trying out different stuff, seeing what feels best. That feel and that grip, both stiffness and grippiness matter. But what also matters is gonna be that second main point of why one might wanna bag multiple different plastics. And that's gonna be the wear and tear levels and the durability levels of different plastics. In the premium plastics, your disc should maintain its shape and it'll have surface scratches and things that over time will shave a little bit of plastic off, make it get more understable. But for the most part, it'll maintain its shape even through some hard tree hits. So whereas some of those putter plastics, some of those baseline plastics, you're gonna hit a tree and you're gonna see little bits of warping happen right away and that's gonna affect the flight and that's not always a bad thing. The third reason to me is gonna kinda of tie into that second reason and that's gonna be the slight different flights that you can achieve out of different plastics in the same mold. Sometimes you're gonna want a dead straight shot where you can release flat on a certain disc. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to throw that same release and have the disc just drift off to the right ever so slightly or vice versa, have it drift off to the left ever so slightly and sometimes you can achieve those slight micro variants of the same flight with the same disc in different plastics. So being able to shape different versions of the line that you like throwing with this comfortable disc in your hand, because so much of the game is what feels comfortable, what gives you confidence. So if you're comfortable with a certain disc and you can have two or three variants of it to achieve a wider range of shots than you would be able to with just one version of that disc, I think it's a no brainer. And the final main reason in my mind to have your premium plastics versus your putter and baseline plastics is gonna be the ground play and the different ground play that those discs offer. Typically, the premium plastics are gonna be more skippy, they're more rigid, so when they hit the ground, they don't absorb as much impact, and because of that, they come off the ground with more force, and a lot of times, those slightly less grippy plastics also allow them to slip off the ground and skip even bigger than their baseline and putter plastic counterparts, which are gonna have a little bit more give to the plastic inherently, which is gonna make it kinda hit the ground and absorb some of that impact as well as it has a grippier plastic, so it's not gonna wanna jump off the ground quite as quick. And sometimes this might just be a minor difference. All these changes in plastics that I'm talking about, sometimes it can only be a two, five, eight percent difference in flight that we're looking at or percent in ground play, but sometimes even two percent of ground play can be the difference between being in bounds and being out of bounds or be the difference between having a wide open putt or being behind this row of logs, say behind the basket here, and not having a great stance. So sometimes those micro differences throughout the course of a tournament, throughout the course of a season, make a massive difference in your placement in these tournaments and, and how well you play. So I think it's important to have multiple different plastics in certain molds that you really gravitate towards so that you can use them to your advantage in all situations. So let's throw a couple shots and show you guys what I'm talking about. By the way, if you're wondering, this is the Discology Icon bag, and I've now been able to wear it for quite a few rounds. I'm carrying so much in here, and it's still extremely comfortable. I haven't yet came off the course and had my shoulders feeling sore. Even after today's practice where I threw a lot of extra shots with my guy Joey Buckets and Braden Sides out here getting ready for Tallahassee Open, we threw some extra forehands, threw a lot of shots. My body feels great, and this Icon bag, it's really getting the job done. What more can I say? It's really the added softness and grippiness of those baseline and putter plastics that make them have a little bit less ground play over time 
the way they bend and form to the ground, depending on how soft they are, then those premium plastics will. I'm gonna throw both my walkers here. One in the putter plastic. This is the Delta II D2 plastic, a firm putter plastic with still high levels of grip. And this one's gonna be an Alpha Walker, which is gonna have still grip for a premium disc, but definitely less grip on the ground over time. It should have a little bit more ground play. I'm gonna try to throw them both on Heiser forehands and see how much skip they provide. I'm gonna try to throw both of them at the basket on a little bit of hyzer about head height. Theoretically, the premium plastic should show you guys a bigger skip at the end. There's that D2, hits the ground, pretty soft, gentle skip there, not too much ground play. Here's this alpha walker. Yeah, there you can see, not a huge difference, but that one hopped about 20 feet in the air, whereas the other one maybe only 10 feet. And sometimes that can be the difference between an open putt and a guarded straddle look. Now let's see if the horny toad shows those same properties. This one's also the Delta II firm putter plastic. A little nosy. Very muted skip there. You can go ahead. We got us a runner sprinting through the course plan. I always love to see it. It's great cardio. And you get to play a little bit of disc golf. Your score might suffer, but if you can get through there with like a couple over par and sprint through that thing in like 23 minutes, I think you should feel pretty good about yourself. Maybe that'll be my next round. Who's willing to be my cameraman for a running round at Tom Tom Brown Park here in Tallahassee, Florida, or anywhere on the tour. If you are willing to run behind me and you have a gimbal and you're gonna be at a disc golf pro tour event this year, shoot me a message, let's make this happen. This is a Founders Horny Toad, gonna be a premium plastic. I'm gonna try to match that same shot and let's see if it'll skip a little bit bigger. Will that Horny Toad hop? Okay, that one's a little more driven, so we should see some more ground play because of that alone and definitely got a little bit more out of that. You guys get the point though. Depending on the mold, depending on the company also, you might see a slightly different flight depending on the plastic blend that you're going for. These are both in the Victor plastic. This one's the Victor 2, a little bit stiffer. It's what I've been putting with. And this blue monad's in the Victor 1, a little bit softer. It's what I've been throwing. And I've noticed that the softer V1 molds up to be a little bit more overstable. I'm gonna throw both of these flat and show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, flat, right at the basket. There it is, flat, holds the whole way, never really turns, but check out the V1. I'm gonna to try to throw that same angle, same height, and you're gonna see it fight out at the end and work its way left. That little bit of turn, flat, and there you can see it fighting left at the end. Another one of those subtle differences that can make you choose between one plastic or another. The Penny Putter is a disc I've been loving, and they just came out with a Delta Plastic variant of it. I'm trying to beat this one in so that I can have some variation between it and my Alpha one. And I have a big tree trunk in front of me. And for the sake of this video and experimentation and showing you guys the information I'm trying to tell you, I'm gonna throw this disc at this tree really hard and it's gonna warp it a little bit. And because that's probably gonna have, gonna have a touch more turn than it did before I throw it at this tree intentionally. But because of that, it's now gonna fly a little bit more understable than my Alpha one. And it's gonna make it worth bagging both of them, not only for the different ground play, but for the slightly more understable flight. So you're welcome. I'm gonna throw my disc at this, tr on th at this tree on purpose for you guys. I don't even know what to say because I'm flabbergasted that I'm even doing this. What did I say? You gotta preach it, you gotta teach it, but then are you gonna execute it too? Sorry, Abe. Whoops. Apparently I'm really bad at hitting trees, so I'm gonna throw that again and try to square it up a little bit, a little bit more direct on, not glance off the left side. Really show you guys what I'm talking about. 
Oh, that's what we were looking for. Some of you might say, poor disc. Oh my gosh, it's never gonna be the same. Well, guess what? That's okay, because I want it to be more understable. And now that I threw it at the tree, you can see it really bent this wing down and it's gonna make this thing fly quite a bit more understable now than it did before. That's gonna be just fine for my uses for the disc though. I can take my same alpha penny putter and I'm gonna throw it at the tree as well. You know what? For the sake of experimentation, I'm gonna show you guys, no matter how, how hard I throw this one, unless I throw it into a molten lava, it's not really gonna change shape. Oh my gosh. Well, that might have been scary and I might have just almost murdered the camera. The way that the alpha plastic jumped off that tree also showed what I was talking about earlier, how when the premium plastics hit something, they have more energy coming off of them because they don't bend quite as much, so they really flex back pretty hard. Whereas when I hit it with the delta plastic, it just flopped and sat right next to the tree. This one went shooting 30 feet and almost took away our ability to shoot YouTube videos for 2024. No good. Now that I threw my penny putter straight into a tree, I'm gonna show you guys that it's probably a little bit less stable than this alpha one, even though I threw it into the same tree equally as hard. Let's go alpha first. Flat release, you can see it just holds dead straight the whole way. I'm gonna try to match that same flat release here. We should see some left to right action. Now you can see I released it a little bit earlier, but it had that bit of left to right that allowed it to get in the gap there. And now I've got two penny putters and they both do different things, suckers. <laughs> Let's look over those key points on why one might want to choose two different types of plastics for the same disc. The first one is gonna be for the grip, the hand feel. Whether it's in good weather or bad weather, you gotta have that grip. You gotta have the feel you want to execute the shots that you want. The second reason is gonna be so that you have different rates of durability on your disc. This alpha penny putter is gonna last quite a bit of time. This D21 is gonna change flights over time and that's okay, they can complement each other. The third reason is gonna be those different shot shapes that you can achieve out of the same mold with different plastics, thus opening up your ability to maintain comfort while playing better. And the fourth and final main reason in my mind is gonna be the difference in ground play in the two plastics, a little bit of muted ground play out of those baseline putter plastics, a little bit of extra kind of ramped up ground play out of those premium plastics. If you have any other reasons why you like to bag two different types of plastic or three, four different types of plastic, let me know in the comments how many plastic types do you have for the most populous disc in your bag and why do you use each one? Thanks you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tip that I just shared with you guys and hopefully it shed some insight into why some of the best players in the world are doing what they're doing to some of you guys and some of you guys it's gonna be old news and that's just fine. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me throw my penny putter point blank into a tree. Regardless of why you're here, I appreciate it. Make sure to share it with a friend like and subscribe and we'll see y'all soon.